What is going on YouTube? This is Red Horse Snoggle coming at you with another WWE review. This time we're going to review the one night of the year where Raw and SmackDown go head to head with each other. Survivor Series. Um, crazy show tonight. A lot of stuff happened. Um, some stuff that will foretell what will happen in the future. And just some interesting stuff that might happen in Raw, in Raw and SmackDown. So... Let's not waste any time. Not even bother. Not even gonna bother going off about the kickoff show because the kickoff show literally nothing happened. They added two matches and literally nobody cared about it. So, anyways, to open up the show, the Shield versus the New Day. Now, literally, this match was created last Monday or last Monday Tuesday um, on SmackDown and Raw because the, the Shield challenged the New Day for a match, and the New Day accepted. So, and my thing is, you know. I was excited about the tag team match you know, with um she uh, not Sheamus and Cesaro um with um Ambrose and Rollins versus the Usos. I thought that match might have sold the show, but I guess they scrapped that idea and they just said f you to everyone and just scrapped the plans and then decided to go with the Shield and New Day. Now to me, the Shield reunion was one of the most awkward things to happen this year. I mean, I'm not saying the Shield reunion as a whole is bad, but it's just right now I don't think it's right. I mean, I know what they're doing. They're trying to get Roman Reigns to be cheered. And I know some people are going to be like, no, that's not what it is. You know, they're going to put them back and stuff. So, I get what people are saying about that, but I just don't believe it. I just think that they're still trying to push Roman to the top. And the fact that he got sick was just a um, sort of like on hold with the Shield reunion. So, literally TLC was just improvised. So, that's why I didn't really like TLC. And not just because of that, it's just for many more reasons. But I just don't like the fact that this match is happening still because I know what they're doing this match for. They're, they're doing a series of S.H.I.E.L.D. matches just so, you know, they can get the S.H.I.E.L.D. back together. And then obviously, you know, the one positive I see coming out of this S.H.I.E.L.D. reunion is that Ambrose can turn heel and then go up against Rollins. And then Reigns, which is the negative portion of what I how I see this, Reigns goes on to face Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship at Mania. How? He might win the Royal Rumble. That's my prediction. I mean, it's in Philly, as I said before. It's in Philly. Um, I really think they might give him the Royal Rumble win in Philly because WWE just doesn't care about the fans. They really don't. And if you tell me yes, then explain some of the Rumbles. I don't know. But anyways, let's just get on to the matchup. Um, Shield, the Shield was very dominant throughout um, the beginning of the match. Um, there was two splashes by Kofi and Biggie at one point in the match. Um, double midnight hour um, to Ambrose and Rollins. But guess what? Um, all of a sudden, Roman Reigns just pops up with a spear to Kofi Kingston. And then um, the Shield decided to do the famous triple powerbomb. And, and then they didn't do just any ordinary triple powerbomb. They did it from the second rope. So... That was pretty cool. One, two, three. Shield got the win. Raw is up one, one zero. Oh. So it was a pretty good matchup. I mean, I didn't say this was going to be necessarily a terrible matchup, but I just don't like the reasoning behind it. I mean, New Day, um, they're a great tag team. I mean, there's nothing really for them to do right now in SmackDown. So I guess they just thought, oh, we got the New Day, and we're 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 doing the Shield reunion too. So let's just put these two together. Um, See how it works, you know. Um, it just it just mixes, man. It just mixes. I don't know. That's just a scenario that I thought they would do. They were thinking about, but I don't know. But the match overall wasn't that bad. It was pretty good. Um, in terms of what's next for the Shield, um, I really don't know. I mean, they could break up by the time WrestleMania season comes by because I don't think there's necessarily going to be a Raw pay per view in December. So because there's only Clash of Champions, and then. That's it for now, I'm guessing. So, um, I'm not sure, but it's probably going to be Clash of Champions in the Rumble. So, if the Shield doesn't break up by then, um, I don't know. They'll probably break up during WrestleMania season if it's not before to the if it's not before 2018. So, that's just my prediction. Shield won. New Day. What's next for them? I don't know. They'll probably just goof around on SmackDown and just do improv matches um, on on SmackDown. I mean, there's really nothing for them to do right now. I mean, you could put them in the tag title picture just to make things interesting, but that's just too soon. They recently went against the Usos and and um, lost the championships, I believe. I, I, can't, I can't remember. My memory's stupid. Um, but I believe they lost the championships against the um, the Usos at Hell in a Cell. So, 
yeah, nothing really for the New Day to do. But besides that, um, good match. A lot of close calls, though. Very, a lot, a lot of close calls tonight. So Shield ends up victorious, gives Raw a 1-0 lead for Survivor Series. Team Raw versus Team SmackDown, the women's 5-on-5 five -five traditional elimination match. To me, this was one of the um, one of the less um, one of the less exciting matchups because you know the fact that they put Alicia Fox as captain makes me scratch my head like why, just why? I don't I don't get any of this. I don't. But anyways. I don't get what they put on Alicia Fox's cap, and that was just one of my biggest complaints. And one of my biggest complaints, too, is that they keep saying, you know, oh, who's she going to pick next? Because the rosters aren't even that big. They're acting like, you know, they got a plethora of women on the Raw roster and the SmackDown roster. But um, the truth is that the women, the women's rosters on both Raw and SmackDown are not really that big. So I don't know why they're acting like they have a plethora of women on each brand. So the captains started off each match, um, Becky Lynch and Alicia Fox, and this match was just really weird, because this match, it got pretty interesting towards the end, but in the beginning and the middle, it was just very bland and boring. But Becky Lynch um, was eliminated early by Bailey due to a roll-up, that was just stupid, the team captain of SmackDown was already eliminated like that. I mean, it was Becky Lynch too, so how are you going to eliminate one of your best superstars on SmackDown? Like that. Good way to treat your own, um, your own talent, um, WWE. Then, a uh, splash to Bailey by Tamina. Then Bailey got eliminated. Then Nia Jax got eliminated by Countout due to a brawl with Tamina. T two Samoans going at it with each other. Oh my god, that gives Vince a boner. And even though it's not really a huge boner because Vince would prefer two big, sweaty men. And if they're Samoan, that's even a harder one. Then Fox, uh, then Fox got eliminated by pinfall by Naomi, and then Banks um, made Naomi tap out. Um, Sasha Banks came in all of a sudden and then just locked in the Banks Banks statement. Then Naomi got eliminated. Then um, roundhouse kick by Asuka to the face of Carmella. Then Carmella got eliminated, and then Banks tapped out to the sharpshooter by Natalia. And then at this point, SmackDown was up two one. So the sole survivor. At this point was Asuka. Now this had me really really worried. Because Asuka. I, I say this all the time. Asuka is undefeated. She's the Empress of Tomorrow. She had a 500 day title reign as NXT Women's Champion. But had to forfeit due to an injury. So at this point I was about to be pissed. Because if they let Asuka get pinned tonight. That means her undefeated streak is broken. She gets pinned. One, two, three. Her undefeated streak is over. But my instincts, but that was just like my rage. I feel like that was just my rage, you know, about to blast if she got pinned. But in my mind, in my logical mind, um, I thought, okay, Asuka is supposed to be, you know, the biggest, um, the biggest superstar on Monday Night Raw, right? Or one of the biggest um, superstars on Monday Night Raw. So it only makes sense that she wins the match for, for Raw and goes up 2-0. And eliminates the two women, Naomi and not Naomi, um, Natalia and Tamina, and wins the match. It'll just make her, um, it'll just make her status even higher on Raw. So, so after Asuka gets in the ring, she does an arm arm bar to Tamina, and then Tamina taps out and gets eliminated. Then, uh, then Asuka does an Asuka lock to Natalia, and then Natalia just just couldn't get out. Then Natalia got eliminated. Then Asuka gives Team Raw the victory as the sole survivor. This will probably mean that she will get a title match in the future. Um, hopefully it's not an, on an episode of Raw because the, to me that's just a bit too soon. I prefer for her to win the title at Mania. That's just, you know, the scenario that I see it. She wins the title at Mania or, or something like that or something along those lines. But she should win the title at Mania. Um, who should hold the title? I'm not sure. But... Whoever it is, it's got to be somebody worthy. So, who, who could be next to challenge Alexa Bliss for the Women's Championship? Um, I don't really know. I mean, the, the roster is not really that big, so there's not much to choose from. But, anyways, Asuka picked up the victory as the sole survivor and gives Team Raw the victory. Now, Team Raw is 2-0. Baron Corbin versus The Miz. Champion versus Champion match. Um, this match um, was sort of okay. 
I mean, the build-up was just literally on Twitter, just them trash-talking to each other, and Miz saying, I will rip your fucking teeth out. You know, of course, Miz is always good at cutting promos. I mean, the dude has improved drastically on his promos, to be honest. And Baron Corbin, Baron Corbin, I don't know. It's just like, ever since he lost the money in the bank briefcase, he, his status, or in my eyes, I just see him, you know, being, you know, less worthy. Well, not less worthy. I just see him as, um, what's that word? What am I looking for? He's just, he's just not that as great as he used to be. He's just not as great as he used to be, to be honest. Because when he held that briefcase, he was great. He was fantastic. Loved him on the mic. It's just, it was just a great, he was just a great superstar overall. But then once he lost, once he lost the briefcase, then once he, once he started being treated as a joke, and then once he started winning the U.S. title, it's just, it just didn't make sense, man. It didn't make, it didn't really make sense. And then now he's the United States champion, which, you know, feels weird, to be honest, after all the failures that he's gone through in the past few months. So, during the match, Corbin's leg got hurt by Bo Dallas, and then now they focus on the leg of Baron Corbin as, you know, that's one of the factors of Baron Corbin because, you know, he's big, you know, if you take out his leg, then you won't have to worry about anything. Then Miz continued to work on Corbin's leg, and then at one point in the ma- and then at the ending of the match, um... Barry Corbin was stuck in the corner, or in the, stuck in the corner, and then he did a end of days to the Miz. One, two, three. Baron Corbin wins. Decent matchup, you know. wasn't really terrible. wasn't really terrible, but it was a decent match overall. Baron Corbin winning. I guess I'm okay with. I would have preferred the Miz a little bit because the Miz is, you know, the Miz is just so much better than Baron Corbin. I don't understand why they decided Baron Corbin. I mean, I know they've been treating him like crap. I mean, they. Put him up against Kalis, not Kalisto, um, Sin Cara on SmackDown for the United States Championship, and he's been fighting with him for a few weeks. So it was all like, okay. So they basically don't give a fuck about him. So Corbin picks up the victory. Um, I, I bet Sin Cara's going to challenge Baron Corbin, because that's just the only scenario that I see. He's been challenging Corbin for the past few weeks. I know he signed a multi-year contract now, so I'm guessing... WWE might might put Sin Cara against Baron Corbin on SmackDown, even though it wouldn't make any sense because all of a sudden Sin Cara becomes an irre- from, from an irrelevant person to a relevant person. All of a sudden, you can't just do that. It's that's that's the Jinder Mahal treatment. All of a sudden, Jinder Mahal became a jobber, and then he's now a jacked up dude. You you know, being put in championship in world championship matches. That's not how it works. That's how it works. You know, at least choose a worthy contender. Put that put Ty Dillinger against Baron Corbin. You could have put the title on Ty Dillinger and put him up against the Miz. I would have enjoyed that match a little bit better than this one, but this but this match tonight was decent. I would have preferred Ty Dillinger versus um the Miz instead of Baron Corbin versus the Miz. So that's just my opinion. The match is decent overall. Baron Corbin wins. I think at Clash of Champions he might face Sin Cara, but I would prefer him to face um Ty Dillinger or Bobby Roode or one of those guys. Cesaro and Sheamus versus the Usos champion versus champion match. Now, as I said earlier, they changed up the tag team matches or the tag team match for um, Survivor Series. It was Ambrose and Rollins versus the Usos. A lot of people were like, looking forward to that match. Me personally, I was looking forward to it too because I thought, you know, this match would have stolen the show. Everyone was hyped for it. I was hyped for it. But then all of a sudden, they just said, nope. And then they decided to drop the tag titles. To um, Cesaro and Sheamus on Monday Night Raw. Thanks to the New Day. Which led to that New Day versus Shield match. So so, so even though the, tie, the t- tag match was changed. I still I was still excited for it. Because I know Cesaro and Sheamus can damn well put up a good match. No matter who they're up against. The Usos. To me this was you know this was a very exciting match still regardless of what. Regardless of Rollins and Ambrose being taken out of the match. Or being replaced in the match. But the build-up, there wasn't too much build-up, but it was just mostly, you know... Actually, there was a little bit more build-up t- for the Rollins and Ambrose match than, you know, Cesaro and Sheamus. So, I can't really say much about the build-up because there was barely any build-up. You know, it was just the Usos, you know, calling out Cesaro and Sheamus, you know, saying, Welcome to the Uso Penitentiary, blah, blah, blah. Then Cesaro and Sheamus saying, blah, 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 we are the bar, blah, 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 that sort of stuff. So, not really too much build-up in terms of the match, but I was, we were, it was built based off of hype. Because we all knew that this was going to be one of the better matches on the show. And it definitely was one of the better matches on the show. Um, white noise to Jay, to, uh, Jay Uso. But Jimmy saved the match at one point. Um, 
Towards the end of the match, um, there was a double super kick by the Usos to Sheamus, and then a big splash by J- Jimmy, or is it J- I don't know. I don't even want to try. To Sheamus, and then the Usos won, giving SmackDown one victory. So they were up 2-1. Now, sm- at this point, SmackDown was up 2-2. Two, two. Actually, I just said 2-1. Sorry about that. Um, SmackDown was now up 2-2. Two, two. So... After that Corbin match, then the Usos won, which was, you know, a big step up for SmackDown. Um, it was a great match, though. It was a really good, great match. And um, hopefully um, the Usos have bigger and better things to do. And one thing I just wanted to point out, to me, the Usos are one of the best damn tag teams in in, in the roster right now, to be honest. You know, you could, you could tell me, you know, oh, Gals and Anderson could be the one of the best tag teams. Yes, they could. But are they being treated as the best tag teams on the roster? No. Are they holding the Raw Tag Team Championships? No. Are they, you know, putting up good promos? No. All they're doing is just saying, Nerds! Like it's the Simpsons. Come on. But anyways, um, what's next for the Usos? I feel like they'll go up against um, Benjamin and Gable. That's just the only scenario that I see coming out of Survivor Series. Cesaro and Sheamus, they'll probably put up another rematch against um, Ambrose and Rollins. Unless they're doing other plans for the Shield, I don't know. They got uh, they got a bunch of possibilities for both tag team divisions. But anyway, Cesaro, Cesaro and Sheamus lost. Usos got the victory. Good choice. I would have chose the Usos also. Um, SmackDown was tied two two now. Um, great match overall. If you got the chance, check out this match. It was a really great match and very entertaining match. A lot of close calls. You know, a lot of intensity and just a lot of excitement and entertainment overall. Next up, Alexa Bliss versus Charlotte. Champion versus champion match. Um, I know originally they had Natalia versus Alexa Bliss, and I was just like, oh my god. You know, after, you know, what I've seen from Natalia recently, you know, I wasn't really excited for the match. I mean, I know Alexa Bliss can, like, put up some really great matches, but... But I wasn't really too hyped for Alexa Bliss versus Natalia, because to me, that doesn't really seem that appealing. Especially for just wrestling fans overall. It's just not that appealing. You know, Natalia, you know, has been okay as champion. You know, hasn't really done too much with the championship. But she's been okay as champion. But then all of a sudden, she gets, she has to defend the title on SmackDown against Charlotte. And then Charlotte wins the, wins the Women's Championship in a great, great match on SmackDown. In her hometown, Ric Flair came out. Hugged Charlotte. It was a great moment. So Charlotte won the championship, which meant that the, that the match was changed to um charlotte versus alexa bliss and i know people have been talking about this match for what about a year or two now so another dream match um happening tonight on uh survivor series so um to me i was actually looking forward to this match i thought this match was a lot more appealing than natalia versus alexa bliss because you know charlotte both women actually not even charlotte both women have held the raw women's championship at the smackdown women's championship in their career, so it was pretty interesting. Alexa Bliss, you know, has been one of the more dominant women in the women's division, and then Charlotte has been one of the more dominant women, or is the dominant woman in the women's division. So it was a pretty interesting matchup. I thought it was actually going to be a pretty good matchup. Um, I just wanted to point out Alexa Bliss is dumb because at one point in the match, she did a DDT and decided to pull Charlotte a little bit away from the ropes. But then decided to pick up the leg that was not closest to the rope. She picked up her, her left leg, I believe it was, and then let her right leg go. And then her right leg landed on the rope. So I thought that was just dumb of Alexa Bliss. I mean, I know she's five feet of fury, but come on. She can't be that dumb to just let her leg go like that. I mean, come on, Alexa. I know you're better than that. But um, towards the end of the match, figure eight, um, figure eight um, was locked on Alexa by Charlotte. Um, Alexa decided to tap out. Charlotte wins. I expected this. We all expected this. This gave SmackDown a 3-2 lead. So, but, and it was a great matchup overall. I mean, we all knew it was going to be a good matchup. You know, it was it was a night of good matchups, to be honest. You know, the women's the last women's match was a bit iffy. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, the last women's match was a bit iffy. You know, didn't really enjoy it as much as this one. But this one was actually pretty good. I actually enjoyed it. You know, congratulations to um, Charlotte for the victory. Um, good match overall. SmackDown went up 3-2 at this point. 
actually what's next for charlotte what could be next for charlotte um she could possibly she could she'll probably face italia because they don't have anybody on the roster i know a lot of people were speculating that carmelo was going to cash in tonight i didn't really think that was going to happen if it did then would have been shocking would have been a cool moment but you know i didn't think it would be the right scenario but it would be a perfect it would be a perfect place but i don't think it would be the perfect scenario because you know you have two different champions but then again, she could choose which brand she wants to go on. So if Carmella wanted to stay on SmackDown, then she could have just cashed in on Charlotte. But I don't know. The possib- the, the scenarios are just endless. But overall, Charlotte picked up the win against Alexa Bliss, giving Team SmackDown another win. AJ Styles versus Brock Lesnar. I am so, so glad they changed up the main... No, actually, this wasn't the main event. But I'm so glad they changed up this champion versus champion matchup because it was needed urgently. I know some people actually like Jinder Mahal. And I'm not going to bash them too much. But then again, they're they're the type of wrestling fans who are ruining the company. Because they're actually saying that they like this guy. But to be quite honest with you, you know, I'm glad they got Jinder Mahal in that matchup. Because that matchup would just be... You know, dull, boring. Jinder Mahal is just terrible in the ring. You know, his in-ring, his in-ring moves are just terrible. The Colossus is a stupid finisher, and for him to go again, up against Brock Lesnar would just be one of the stupidest matchups I've ever seen in my life. So I'm glad they got AJ in there, make it a little bit interesting and more appealing. To be honest, I'm glad AJ took the title off Jinder Mahal just because the Ma- the Maharaja era is finally over. Because I'm sick and tired of this dude holding the championship. Because this dude. It's, it's he's so bland, boring, and he he's just I don't know why they decided to put the championship on him in the first place if he was gonna be a failure from the beginning. I I, I felt like Vinny Mahal was gonna be a failure, and guess what? I was correct. I hate him. You know, I mean he was he's a terrible champion. He's bad in the ring. He's bland on his promos. I mean, I don't know how people can like this guy. I really don't. But. My my only thing was about this match. Why was the match? Why was this match specifically not the main event? I know they like to put Brock Lesnar in the main event a lot, but somehow this match did not end up being the main event. But I guess they just wanted to save the five on five elimination match for later because they knew that that was a much bigger matchup. You know, you got a lot of bigger names. You got Cena. You got Shane. You got um, Nakamura, Brood, Kurt, um, Triple H. You know, it's Joe, Balor, all those guys. So I understood why they put this match before the main event. Um, in terms of what I expected this match, I expected an actual long and somewhat of an actual wrestling match. Besides, you know, Brock Lesnar tossing a tossing, you know, his opponent and suplexing his opponent, which you know he uh, he obviously did. I mean, Brock Lesnar is Brock Lesnar. He could do whatever the hell he wants. But AJ got obliterated in the beginning of the match. Literally got tossed around, got suplexed. He got thrown around and suplexed at almost every second that was possible. And then at one point, when Brock was standing, AJ actually hurt Brock's leg. And then Brock's, uh, Brock um, started to limp and stuff. And then AJ took advantage, got some offense in there. You know, that's when the match started to pick up. AJ went for the phenomenal forearm towards... Um, he went for the phenomenal form at one point, but Brock kicked out. He went for a Styles Clash, but just couldn't do it. And then AJ went for another phenomenal forearm towards the end, but Brock reversed into an F5. F5, Brock Brock Lesnar won. Um, it was pretty predictable from the beginning, if we're all going to be honest here. I mean, it's Brock Lesnar. If it, if you're watching a Brock Lesnar match, then you're, mo- then you're most probably going to get the result of Brock Lesnar winning. I mean, dude has a part-time contract. He's a champion. He'll do whatever the hell he wants. The only time he'll actually lose um, will probably be against Roman Reigns, just like The Undertaker lost to Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. So if Brock Lesnar were to lose, it'll probably be to Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. I know some of you might be getting annoyed, like, Stop saying that the Roman Reigns is going to beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. You know, plans contained, bro. You know, plans contained. You know, you know, you can't always be right. Well, if you got an actual mind like I do, then that's the most likely that's the most likely scenario to happen at New Orleans at WrestleMania. But as I said, predictable. We all knew Brock was going to win. I mean, it's Brock Lesnar. If you see any Brock Lesnar match, then he's most likely going to win. It was a good match, though. You know, we actually got you know a longer Brock Lesnar match or a longer match with Brock Lesnar inside it, and AJ 
AJ did a kind of a good job um, carrying the match because, you know, AJ, you know, I, I wish the match would have been a little bit more. I know the match could be, you know, much better. I wish, you know, they let AJ have a little bit more offense because, you know, they treated AJ like the underdog, obviously, because he's much smaller, but he's much faster. So I wish he, they would have let AJ get a little bit more offense and actually made it, make him look worthy because AJ, they, they, they treat him as like one of the best wrestlers in the world. But once he goes up against Brock Lesnar, then all of a sudden he's just a rag doll. So, I wish they would have let him get a little bit more offense in terms of um, in terms of uh, in the ring, because I know Brock, because Le- all Brock Lesnar did was just toss AJ around and suplex him, put him on the turnbuckle, knee him, that's it. So ho- I was hoping they would let you know AJ do a little bit more cool moves, because I know AJ likes to pull a lot of moves in his bag, some we've never seen before. Um, so hopefully you know hopefully um, AJ's all right. Because AJ got obliterated really, really bad. Same goes to Brock Lesnar. I know Brock Lesnar was limping t- towards the end of the match. I don't know if he actually hurt his leg or not. But regardless, hopefully Brock Lesnar is just fine. So Brock won the match. Um, in terms of what's next for both men, AJ, obviously on the SmackDown side, he's going to go up against Jinder Mahal. And unless they want to go to the India Tour, or actually the, I think the India Tour is going to happen early in December. So, yeah, um... AJ will probably be champion going going to that tour. Um, AJ, hopefully AJ holds the title to Mania. Hopefully he can face Nakamura. I'm I'm wanting Nakamura to win the Rumble because that match right there will automatically sell out the the Superdome, the Mercedes Benz Superdome. So hopefully they create that match because that match will be phenomenal. I know that sounds cliche, but it is going to be a phenomenal match. That's if they just let him go loose. All right. Hopefully there's no restrictions in terms of that match, but that's that's hopefully the prediction that's that, that's going to be correct. Um, AJ holds the title to Mania. He'll probably fa- defend against Ginger at Clash of Champions. Hopefully he retains, and if not, I don't know. If he wins at Clash of Champions, then oh boy, we are gonna be in for a ride, ladies and gentlemen, because the the cringe Raja will return eventually. Because I don't know why. Because they just want this zoo to be shoved down our throats. Last but not least, 5-on-5. Five five, the 5-on-5 five five elimination matchup. Raw versus SmackDown. And it is, it is the sudden death match. Raw is 3. Raw is up 3. SmackDown is up 3. It is a tie between the two brands. Um, Cena got another shirt. He got a new shirt. It's now green. Um it's like a it's like a green it's like a light green but a bright green i don't know this juice has so many colors I, I i don't even know what color to describe anymore um at the beginning of the match or actually after all the entrances because that those entrances took about about what 10 minutes 15 minutes a good about um shane attacked Strowman before the matchup then shane got murked in the process i don't know why shane would do that shane would just just flat out stupid just for that then there, we got a bunch of teases for a bunch of dream matches, as we expected. Um, we got, you know, stuff like Joe and Orton, Nakamura and Balor confronted each other. They fought for f- they fought for a few minutes, you know. It was an actual good tease, you know. Just like, it, it kind of reminded me of when um, AJ and Nakamura fought for a little bit at um, um, Money in the Bank. There we go, that's what I was looking for. Then Nakamura and Triple H confronted each other. This was the most interesting because whoever Triple H confronted with that was in NXT, I found very interesting because Triple H is sort of the father of NXT and whoever came out of NXT is his, are his sons, basically. Or his children, I should say. So it was interesting to see Nakamura and Triple H confront each other. Then Rude, Bobby Rude tags in and confronts Triple H. And the reason why I'm laughing is because I like to call Triple H and Bobby Roode twins. If you've seen Bobby Roode like a few years back when he was in TNA, you know, as TNA World Champion, you know, he had long hair, right? He had long hair. You know, it, it kind of reminded you of someone, right? So, <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing so hard. Um, but it basically, Triple H and Bobby Roode look very similar. Um, it's I've seen memes, so many memes about Triple H and Bobby Roode. That it's just the fact that it culminated tonight was just made me laugh out loud because it was just so funny. Then later on in the match, um, Braun Strowman came in, did a running power slam to Nakamura. Then Nakamura was the first guy to get eliminated in the matchup. So you're telling me that you got you know one of your biggest superstars in the company eliminated like that? 
I mean, I understand it's Braun Strowman. Like, all right, he's a big guy. You know, he, he can, he could like literally ram through anybody. So to me, that made sense. But the fact that he just got eliminated first like that, I mean, come on, man. I mean, at least treat Nakamura with some respect. I mean, dude, dude can put up match of the year for you guys. Then Rude got eliminated by Strowman afterwards with a running power power slam. Then Kurt Angle started to s actually no, um, not Kurt Angle. Sorry, I'm I'm reading the wrong notes. Um, then um Shane and uh Randy Orton were trying to do a suplex or actually no, it was it was Randy Orton and John Cena, excuse me, trying to do a suplex to um to Strowman through a table. They kind of struggled, but then the entire SmackDown roster pushed Strowman up, and then Strowman went through the announce table at ringside. Then later on in the match, John Cena came in. He started to do his own stuff. Um. Then um, attitude adjustment to Joe and then to Joe and Balor and then John Cena did another AA to Joe and then Joe got eliminated by Cena so Joe was the first guy to get eliminated on Monday Night, on Monday Night Raw's team. Um, I thought it might have been Balor because you know they don't like they don't really treat Balor, Balor that well, but I guess it was Samoa Joe that took the bullet. Then Cena and Kurt face, face each other. Throwback to 2006. Um, I, I bet, you know, all the old school WWE fans were nutting all over the place because of all the matches of uh, Cena and Kurt had in the past. So that was cool to see, you know, them facing each other again. Then Kurt Angle, uh, turned around for a second. You know, I think he was talking to the referee and then Finn Balor did a coup de grace to Cena and then Angle, uh, and then Angle did an angle slam to Cena. One, two, three, Cena got eliminated by Angle. I'm surprised that Cena got eliminated this easily. I mean, sure, Cena's been gone for a little bit, but I'm surprised he actually got eliminated like that, you know, on this on Survivor Series. I mean, Cena, you know, we haven't seen him in months. I mean, we haven't seen him since No Mercy, which was in September. So we haven't seen him in about, what, two months? So, yeah, I'm surprised Cena got eliminated that early. I don't think, I mean, not that I don't think he should have gotten eliminated that early. I mean, at that point, the match was about, what, 15, 20 minutes solid into the matchup so it kind of made sense to get Cena eliminated at that point but the fact that he got eliminated that fast by not doing that much in the ring um was kind of surprising to be honest I guess Cena just wanted to, just to be there and then do like his little own thing you know doing AA five knuckle shove I think he just did it for a quick paycheck to be honest because you know Cena is busy with Hollywood now and just doing movie roles and stuff so I guess he just wanted to be there you know, for the hell of it, and get a paycheck, and just do his own thing, you know, say hi to some old friends, fight some new, fight some old friends, and just get out of the building. Then Balor and Orton did, did fought against each other, um, Balor was about to do a coup de grace, but then Randy Orton did an RKO, one, two, three, Balor got eliminated by Orton, and afterwards, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens came to attack Shane McMahon at ringside. Now, I actually expected this, I thought they would actually cause SmackDown to lose the matchup. You know, the sole survivor might have been, you know, maybe Shane McMahon. And then they came in to interfere or something like that or or something along those lines. Uh, anyways, I just expected them to be um, on the pay-per-view screwing Shane McMahon over. It's been teased for weeks. They've been saying, you know, Shane McMahon is the spotlight. He's trying to get the spotlight for himself besides uh, and instead of, you know, everyone else on his roster, blah, 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 stuff along those lines. So this, to me, just told me, okay, they're going to attack him at Survivor Series and probably cause SmackDown the matchup. So that's what happened. Um, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens came out, attacked Shane McMahon. Shane McMahon came out with the steel chair, started just hitting um, Kevin Owens and, Shane, uh, Kevin Owens and um, Sami Zayn. Then Kevin Owens got RKO'd. And then, uh, and then um, Shane McMahon kept hitting um, Sami Zayn. And then they all went, and then both the, the two men went backstage. Um, I had a feeling it was going to happen, as I said. You know, it was pretty obvious, you know, just by them teasing it on SmackDown all the time. Then at this point, Braun Strowman came back, tagged in Kurt Angle, then did a running power slam to Randy Orton. Randy Orton got eliminated by Strowman, and then Shane became the sole survivor. This made sense because, you know, Shane started all this, you know, sees, uh, started all these um fire shots or, you know, started these shots at uh, Monday Night Raw. Um so this all culminated to him being the sole survivor. He it was a three on one um, scenario. He had Strowman, Triple H, and Kurt Angle. So and the, him him he played himself at that point. He just played himself, you know, with all the you know the 
with all you know the attacks the under sieges i'm sorry i gotta say under siege because you know that's that's what wwe wants us to say oh monday night raw got under siege smackdown got under siege st st stupid but whatever um shane mcmahon was the sole survivor and then and then the raw team were debating who will finish shane and then um kurt angle decided all right i'm gonna finish shane and then kurt angle did a ankle lock to um to Shay McMahon, and then Shay McMahon was about to tap, but then Triple H, you, you saw, if you saw Triple H, you had a feeling that he was going to move, so Triple H had that look in his eyes, came in the ring, um, her, pedigree Kurt Angle, and then he turned Shane around, and then let Shane pen Kurt Angle, and then Shane looked so confused, and then Triple H just kind of looked at Strowman, and then he, 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 he was like, it looks like he was about to betray him. And then he was asking, you know, Shane, you know, are you all right? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Shane looked confused, too. And then Triple H decided to pedigree Shane McMahon. One, two, three. Raw got the victory. Four, three um, in terms of matchups. So, overall, Raw won the war in terms of Survivor Series. We all expected Raw to win because it's the flagship show. We got a 25th anniversary coming up, so it only makes sense that Raw wins. Um... And then afterwards during the match, Braun Strowman was saying, you do not mess with me or you do not like betray me, something along those lines, or you will not ever play the game ever again. And then Braun Strowman, and then Triple H was about to do a pedigree to Braun Strowman, but Braun Strowman did a running power slam. And then he did another running power slam afterwards. Weird ending to the show. I mean, just one of those weird endings to the show. I mean, Braun Strowman, you know, doing the running power slams to Triple H. Who knew we would see a pay-per-view end with Braun Strowman? Power slamming Triple H. I mean, it's weird. R really weird, actually, if you think about it. Because you think, you know, Kurt Angle and Triple H might finish off the match. And then they would have a little confrontation with each other. And then obviously setting up a match. So, regardless of that, you know, it was a really weird ending to me. You know, it was kind of bad. But it was just really weird. It was just kind of bad. But it was just weird. I don't know. It was just weird to me overall. But, um... The fact that Triple H pedigreed um, Kurt Angle already tells me that they're planning a matchup for WrestleMania. So, this basically confirms that Triple H will be going up against Kurt Angle at WrestleMania. Probably for, you know, power over Monday Night Raw. So, so Raw will be at stake for those two men at WrestleMania between Triple H and Kurt Angle. Winner probably gets general manager role at WrestleMania. I don't know. If they do it early, then they're just flat out stupid. But anyways... You know, Triple H versus Kurt Angle will be, um, is the plan right now. Just by, you know, based off of what happened tonight, Kurt Angle versus Triple H will be happening at WrestleMania. Weird, end weird ending, as I said, you know, we got a lot of, you know, stuff that'll tell us, you know, what will happen in the future. But overall, you know, really weird show. Well, not really weird show, but just a really weird ending overall to the show. Anyways, guys, that's my thoughts on the review. Um, pretty enjoyable show. Um, not as bad as, you know, some of the other shows, but it was actually, you know, a pretty wa somewhat enjoyable show. Um, had its lows, had its highs, but overall it was just, you know, an enjoyable show. It was a watchable show, that's what I'll say. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the review. Make sure you like on the video, comment about, comment down below your thoughts on Survivor Series, um, Raw being victorious in the, sur in the Survivor Series. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, I will have more content up soon, and I will see you guys later. This is Red Horse Nongle. Peace out, guys.